Welcome to Lessons We Love, True Fire's newest video series highlighting some of the top lessons in our extensive catalog of guitar courses. Join me on a fun exploration of standout lessons spanning various genres like blues, rock, jazz, country, and so much more. Whether you're a seasoned player or a beginner, these lessons provide a diverse and enriching experience. Tune in as we delve into the heart of True Fire's guitar lesson legacy. Lick 10, I call King Style. Insert your favorite King Blues guitar player in the front of that. This is reminiscent of something one of those great players might have done. Uh, keeping it simple is really what it's about, and I think that if you grasp that in the early stages of your playing, it's really gonna help as you progress. This lick is uh, centered in the key of A over the entire 12 bar form, but let's put it all over the place if we can, when we want to. It'll be really great. Let's try this one. In this lick, we're back in A minor pentatonic, but we're moving up the guitar to another region of the scale sequence. And we're gonna start here on the 10th fret, and we're back to a whole step bend. At this time, though, it's on the first string, and when you're starting out, these strings can be like, you know, like a dagger in, in your calluses, especially if your calluses aren't built up. So take your time, and again, what I hear lots of times with my student is in a bend that's under pitch. You don't want that. You want to really try to achieve that whole step note. So we're going from a D to an E. So imagine you're going from the 10th fret to the 12th fret. Get the other fingers behind it for strength. Push down and push up at the same time. I overshot it a little bit there. Didn't know my own strength. So what you want to do is bend to that pitch. Release the bend. Play the note on the 10th fret. So that's our first half. Bend. Pretty simple idea right there, but you can get mileage out of just something like that. That's what's great about the blues. So again, whole step bend. Move down to the 10th fret now, second string. Let your third finger be ready to play the 9th fret third string note there and then end back on that note. And guess what that note is? It's an A, it's the root note. See where we're headed with all this? Yeah. It really makes for a good musical sentence. And I'll take this moment to just really touch on some vibrato. We'll get into it more here as we move along. But what's important is try to keep this finger lodged up against uh, the fretboard here. All three fingers are on the string for support, and I'm going to pull down and release, pull down and release. This is the hardest thing, I think, to teach in guitar. It's a really tricky technique, um, but we're gonna do little snippets of it as we move along. So that lick one more time with the vibrato added, and we'll, we'll see, how, uh, see how this works for you. I think it's a, a good one to, to move on with. Something reminiscent of Albert King or Albert Collins or anybody with the last name King or Freddie, BB, any of those guys. Uh, this would go right along well with what they would do. So get your whole step bend happening. Start to consider some vibrato. Move on when you're ready. Join me, let's play a C chord. We 
you all know this by now, that's how you play a C chord. I don't need to tell you how to do that. The next thing we want to do is we want to look at the open position major pentatonic that goes with that C chord. Let's check it out. Let's come back down. And the eternal truth here is that for the rest of your life, every time you play this chord, or any chord that ultimately looks like that, those notes are available to you as fill options or even lead options. Um, and yeah, you can probably recognize that is literally my girl. And so to put this information in our heads and in our hands, we want to combine it with rhythm. So let's take probably the most common chord strumming pattern that there is. I mean, I've taught thousands of lessons and thousands of songs. I swear this pattern is everywhere. Hence, I name it the ubiquitous pattern. Down, down, up, up, down. Down, down, up, up, down. Notice, I don't know if you can see on camera, but I am tapping my left foot. I'm actually stomping my left heel. Yeah, groove it. Yeah, a wide swath of mid-tempo to up-tempo songs, that's going to be, that's the default setting. Um, and yeah, I think it's important for us guitar players to have names for the strum patterns that we learn. It, it's our job. It's our job to know chords and grooves just as much as it is to know all the tasty, tasty scales. So to put this stuff all together in a way that's going to kind of teach your brain what's going on and maybe utilize it later on when making up songs, loops, playing with other people, whatever musical things we may do, we want to do one bar of strumming and one bar of very simple quarter note fills from that. I said quarter note fills. So we don't want to do the guitar player thing of... This is all about retraining our brain to control our fingers. So check it, it's super simple, it's very humble. I'm not trying to impress you right now. That's all it has to be. So that's one thing you can do. You can just, with no loop going, with no backing track going, you can just calmly and relaxedly just strum a C. And the reason I, I recommend practicing this way is because it has us working all three elements of music at once. Rhythm, harmony, melody. Rhythm is the groove. Harmony is the chord, melody is the fill, as opposed to we know, we know what we do. We learn a scale and we kind of noodle around with it. Super fun. I will never tell someone to not noodle, but if we want to um, start to rewire our brain to see, you have a chord, you have a pentatonic scale. Boop, 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 boop. They're right there. They're right there next to each other. Now, just to show you how it will sound, perhaps in a track, let's go ahead and pull up that backing track and I will play along with that using this kind of idea. from the backing track. Keep it rolling though. Now just play. Still quarter notes though.
that lick again. Okay, so in conclusion, in review, what you what you want to do, you got your C chord, you got your ubiquitous strum pattern. So assignment one would be, yeah, ubiquitous with quarter note fills. And yeah, let go. Let go of your guitar player. Honestly, it's musician desire to impress yourself or anybody. This isn't about that. You will not learn a single hot lick from this series. What you will learn is, is a, a rewiring of your brain to see chord, you know, a chord is actually an opportunity of notes. It's not this tight thing. I know what we, what we all learned of. That's super cool, super fun. But what, we're, what I'm trying to do here is show you that it all can happen in the same place. And so to make it happen in the same place, it has to be simple for now, for now. It can get more complicated, but why would I do that with the first lesson in the series?